Hello world and welcome. Today we're going to be reacting to a recent live stream that BSG had for the new upcoming patch in December. Um, I think it's going to be patch 0.14, I think. It was just under two hours and there were a lot of things in there that really surprised me uh, in a good way and a couple things that I was expecting and I'm still not sure about. Um, but I wanted to go through all of it because it, it was actually a, a really good live stream. I've watched it like three times in a row. There's there's a lot of stuff that they talked about that are re that's really cool. So I just want to go over that. So we're just we're just going to jump right into it. I'll have some B-roll of the live stream. Um, I might have some clips like some actual clips with their audio as well, showing you some of the stuff that they showed or said. So one of the first things that Nikita mentioned was that Arena is still planned to arrive early December. So hopefully within the first couple weeks, um, hopefully the first week, that'd be cool. Um, they also played Arena a couple times during the live stream. One of the things that I do want to talk about a little bit is while I was watching, I watched other live streamers watch the stream first. So I'm not going to name their names because I don't, I don't want to cause any issues. But there were like a few of the biggest Tarkov streamers out there. I was watching react to this. And when they started playing Arena, they all kind of said the same thing without saying it. Um, I'm going to say it because I don't mean it in a in a bad way. I think it's something that's more of like a constructive criticism type thing rather than an issue. When you watch Nikita play, you can tell that he really doesn't play very often. Um, there were a lot of mechanics that he was trying to use that aren't really relevant in the game anymore. So like he wanted to bind his heels to certain keys and he tried to drag him to it and he couldn't manage to do it. Or when he was healing instead of double clicking, which is a new feature that they just added recently, um, he was still right clicking and use and uh, he wasn't using any of his heels when he had a broken leg so he was just hobbling around everywhere and it's stuff like that that kind of makes you realize like and, and completely understandably he doesn't play the game very much and obviously again that's that's understandable because he's he's working on you know other things he doesn't have time to play it that's perfectly fine but where i kind of feel like there's a little bit of an issue there is when you don't keep up with knowing how to play or play that often and you still keep implementing features into the game that you think sound really cool but if you aren't playing the game actively consistently you aren't really seeing the effects or the negative effects of those features so i think one thing that would be kind of good for nikita is to either play the game more or to listen to the community just a bit more um, for things like the weight system and everything, because I just don't think that he plays enough of it to actually see or feel the impact of the things that he's putting in the game, because they're all really cool on paper, but once they're implemented, it's not so cool. I feel like Nikita is me when I was younger, even though obviously he's, he's older than me, um, but ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to make a game where it was like, let's have you know all this crazy in-depth stuff i want to be able to build a gun from the from the trigger all the way out to every single individual attachment and control everything i wanted to be able to you know have all the like the limbs each limb have its own health system and everything so like he's nikita is doing what i've always said that i wanted to do but as i've played tarkov more i've realized that those features aren't really good once they're actually implemented um there comes a point where there's just too much and a big point of that is the weight system but we'll get into that in a little bit so again i'm not saying anything negative about nikita um in fact this this live stream actually kind of made me see him in a bit of a better light because before i watched this i'd only really heard things about him and like seen like little tiny clips and i kind of had this impression of him where it was he was just going to do whatever he wanted and he didn't care about the community or what anyone said and he was just going to do whatever he wants. And this live stream kind of made me feel like I don't think that's the case. I think he does really want to make a good game. I just don't think that, again, he is playing it enough to see the real impact that it's having. 
I think he's the negative feedback that he's getting is mostly through word of mouth through like other people and not directly the streamers. That's just my assumption. That's kind of what I'm starting to gather. I, I could be wrong. It could be the first one, but I don't think it is anymore. I think I think he really is trying to make things good. He's just not seeing what's actually happening, the side effects. But uh, again, I'll get into that a little bit later uh, when we talk about the armor system, because they touched on that. But since they mentioned Arena, one of the things that I wanted to say is that what they're doing first is if you want to have access to Arena or have your best chance of early access to Arena, um, one, they're going to give that to the EOD account people first. Um, and then they're going to obviously slowly release it to the people who actually bought it. They're doing it in, in waves so that the servers don't get overloaded when instead of just like releasing it and just let chaos happen which is perfectly fine and understandable and probably better. Yes, it's going to be a little crappy for those of us who don't get chosen to get early access right away, but um, I still think that it's better to, when we get access, it functions well, rather than everyone gets access and it's broken for three months. So if you want to have your best chance at getting early access, what you need to do is you need to go to the Escape from Tarkov website and you need to log in to your normal profile and then if you have EOD or if you've purchased arena if you look at the logo up here you'll see this little drop down arrow if you click that it'll take you to arena and then when you go to arena you want to log into there again um, and that way it kind of registers in the system that hey I own this this account owns this and it's logged in and now it's entered you into a list that says okay here are the people that we're going to choose first for arena so you may not get it right away, but you're going to get it before other people who just, you know, before they fully release it. So that's what Nikita was saying. So just make sure you log in. I logged into both. He said arena. Um, I logged into both just for safety. And again, if you have the edge of darkness version of the game, then arena is included. However, um, if you have not heard the edge of darkness edition of the game will actually be removed when the wipe happens in December. So so if you want to have all the perks and everything that that come with the Edge of Darkness version, um, I would do that sooner rather than later because again, in December, they're taking it away um, and then you'll just have to buy Arena independently. But they did say multiple times that when they're taking the EOD version off, they're, all they're doing is taking it off the store. It's not they're not removing anything from your account. They're not changing anything. You keep everything that you've always had. If you had Edge of Darkness, you're keeping all of that forever. It's just that they're no longer going to be selling it. So kind of think of it as here's this really nice item that everyone used to have, but it's no longer in production now. You have it. It's always going to be yours, but no one else is going to be able to buy it from that point on. So don't worry. They're not removing anything. They're just taking it off the store. I don't really know why you would kind of think that a developer wouldn't mind having a, a more expensive product out there, but I don't know. There's there's some reason somewhere. One of the next things he talked about is their Unity update. So they were originally saying that they were going to upgrade to Unity 2021. Right now they're on 2019, I think, but they decided to forego that and they delayed the Unity update, which I saw coming, but instead of going to 2021, they're actually going to go to 2023. So they're going to go to pretty much the most recent version of the software. I don't know if 24 is already going to be released, but you don't generally want to go to like the, the most recent version of softwares when it comes to this type of stuff, because there's always bugs and we all know Tarkov. It's got enough bugs already, and it has since the game released almost seven years ago. So we don't need any more. Uh, I don't know when they're going to be. I think they're going to be probably switching to it sometime next year in 24. But instead of going to 21, they're going to go to 23. They're adding a new location called Ground Zero. This is going to be kind of like a starter location for people and it's you're going to be able to stay there until you're probably level 10 to 15. Maybe it didn't seem like they had that solidified, but that's probably the range. I would probably say 15, you know, let people 
be able to play and experience that and level up until they get the flea market and now they can go off into the world and be big boys and girls. So I'll actually show the clips that they showed of that in the background while I'm talking here. Um, again, it is a starting location. Um, they did say that it's going to have decreased loot. Uh, so I guess it's just to get more familiar with the game and everything, just kind of starting out for people who are brand new, um, which is great. I think that's awesome. The problem is Nikita said that no matter what your level is, no matter what your level is, you can scav on that map, which again, every streamer that I watched had the exact same reaction of that's a terrible idea. Why are you doing that? All you're gonna have is people like Stank Rat. While I love Stank Rat, his content is hilarious, but if I ever get killed by him, I'm gonna lose my mind. I, I, <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him, and maybe he wouldn't do it, but there are definitely, definitely people who love just making other people miserable. And so you're gonna have level 50 PMCs who are gonna scav in to this starter location, and they're just gonna be mowing level ones and twos and tens down with their scavs because they can scav into it. So I'm hoping that with enough people who said that that was a terrible idea, that BSG is gonna listen to that and decide, hey, you know what? That wasn't a good idea. You can't scav here, or you can only, you can bring your scav in, but it only up until you've hit your max level so that you and like your scav and your PMC can no longer go here. There's not really any reason to say, hey, only level PMCs, only level 10 to 15 PMCs can go here, but your level 70 scav can. Not that you're going to have a level 70 scav, but if you're level 70 and you scav in, it just doesn't make any sense. But the location looks really nice. I guess it's actually in the very center of Streets of Tarkov. So like where all the big skyscrapers are and everything, I guess that's where that actually takes place. So that's kind of interesting, but I've, I've always thought that that was a good idea kind of have something like destiny where you know you have this area that you kind of just start out in everyone goes through the same thing and they get introduced to all the mechanics and everything i think that's i think that's a really good idea so good for them they talked about a streets of tarkov expansion they actually talked about it in a couple different points so i'm gonna separate it kind of like they did well actually one of the points, half of the point is more relevant to another one. So I'm going to kind of go back to what it was. So the first thing that they talked about was again, there, there's a expansion. Uh, there's going to be a new boss. His, I think his name is, I, I can't remember. Let me go back and watch. The new boss, the streets of Dark will have uh, uh, its first boss. His name will be Kolontai. I don't know how to translate it in English in Russian, it's Kolontai. So yeah, I just watched the clip back. So his name is Kolontai, and that's my Americanized version. If I say it more in Russian, it's Kolontai. I don't really know much about him. I also am a little confused because I, it seemed like they were saying that he's going to be the streets boss, but Kaban is already there. So I don't know what's going to happen there. I can't remember. I, I don't remember hearing anyone say where he was actually going to be. So I don't know if they're moving Kaban, if they're putting him somewhere else. I, I don't know. Um, well, I do know that they did say that they're going to be adding the BTR, but I don't know if they're adding the BTR boss, if that's Kolontai or not. I don't know. Also, a lot of people were asking about the boss voice lines and stuff, and they said, yes, they're already recording all new voice lines for a lot of the bosses. So if you're one of those people wondering that, there's going to be new voice lines. And they talked about the BTR a little bit more later, so I'll, I'll touch on that in a bit. The vaulting, they showed off the vaulting system. And I'll tell you right now, me and everyone else had very low expectations and the stuff that they showed of that was awesome. That was way better than I expected. Um, it's very quick, it's pretty seamless. Uh, it's It doesn't look like there's gonna be much of a struggle. Now, of course, you know, there's, there's gonna be bugs and I'm sure there's either going to be things that people can't climb that they obviously should, or maybe you'll get stuck in the animation and then you're just, you know, kind of walking around like this, or maybe you can't walk around. Regardless, it, it looks really good. It's very quick, very clean. Um, very excited about the vaulting that, that looks like it's going to help out with a lot of things. 
no more weird awkward kind of like jumping 12 times just to get over one little thing um so here's what it looks like here and it is it's very nice i'm very excited about this So then eventually they talked about the new armor system and this is kind of where I was saying that I've got some issues here and I want to touch on those a bit. So doing all this in the name of realism is cool in a sense and that's what Nikita wants. He wants it to be realistic. So you know all these armors as far as I know these are all real world armors um, and he's treating them like they are treated in real life. One of the things that he mentioned that he like really touched on was the fact that everything that you see as the model that is what is protected if you have a plate in there that's what's protected anything that's not on the model is not going to be protected and he said it in a way that was like look at how cool this is and it is really cool but when you put it into practice with all the other things that the game has including the weight system that becomes an issue what they've done is they've taken the armor and everything, but they've given more slots so that you can apply actual plating to it. So they showed the first thing they showed was the helmets and they were shooting the helmets and you can see that it's taking each plate. One is like kind of like the front and top of the head and then one is the back of the head and you can see each one loses its durability while it's hit independently. And that's not too different from some of the things that we have already you know we've like with these excels here you know you've got these ear protections that you can plop on and now you've got you know some ear protection um if you've got a bastion you can put a couple of those plates on or the slap plates um same with a couple of other the helmets um and that is kind of this already but this is a bit more in depth where it gets really in depth is the body armor so they showed the 6b13 armor here and you can see that in the game currently right now how this works is that this whole thing is just protected it's got even even amounts of protection all the way around so if someone shoots you here it takes damage from the whole thing or if up here it takes damage from the whole thing but you can see the weight here is 10.5 kilograms but in the video when they were showing this off once you have the plates fully loaded and everything that went from 10.5 to 11.5, so that's a whole kilo. So now you've got to worry about being heavier and you have to worry about each individual plate while you're in raid. Okay, I got shot in the left side. My left side plates are, you know, they're damaged or they're, they're zeroed out or whatever. So now I got to try to just keep the fight on my right side. Um, you know, I, ca I got to keep my left side unexposed and stuff like that in a different type of game would be cool. But with all the things that are happening in this game already, it's it's overcomplicating things to the point that I really think that people are just gonna have more of, a, of an issue than a good time. Um, again, these features are really cool. I've always wanted to do something like this too, but when it's in practice, it might not be the best. We'll, we'll have to see, but the next one that has even more of an impact, obviously, is going to be the Thor. Um, and they showed the Thor off, and interestingly enough, it actually does not have as much of a weight increase as the other one did. So I'm looking at the plates and everything here. When it's fully plated up and everything, it takes it from this one, which is currently 18 kilos, to 18 0.04 kilos so that's not a massive weight increase but it still is a weight increase on top of the fact that it's already 18 kilos and if you don't have very high strength the second you equip a weapon um, unless it's like an mp5 or a pistol or something you're gonna be overweight and then when they go into the actual inventory and they show off um, kind of like the stats and everything you can hover over and see everything you can see that that armor is no longer 47 out of 47 hit points now it's 243 out of 243, which I'm assuming still kind of balances out, but it also kind of makes it weaker because the problem is you've got that whole underside here that is no longer protected. So if someone shoots you in the arm and that bullet goes through your arm, it's going into your side. Um, and so you could just easily get one shot by anyone who shoots you in the arm from either the right or left side. 
And the other problem is, is if someone shoots you up here, that's great that the rest of your armor is still fine, but now this is so weak that it's there. There's so many things that you're just going to have to keep track of in the game that I don't think it's going to be an overall good experience. But if they decide to keep this, something that they really need to, to do, um, and I've heard a lot of streamers and YouTubers and everyone say this, that they kind of agree, the weight system is just not good. The fact that you can be so overweight so easily, what you have to do in order to get out of the raid, if you're really overweight, is either use a bunch of stims, which some people really don't like, that people can just inject themselves with a whole bunch of stims, and now they can infinitely sprint and carry the weight of the world and all that stuff if you don't have the stims to do all that you literally have to crawl on your stomach in order to gain stamina or you just stand still you don't want to crouch because if you stand up you lose stamina because that's that's another thing that's a little ridiculous again it's a cool idea in theory but when people are trying to crouch and get in cover and kind of peek out and do whatever they want um, or do whatever they need to do um, and the whole time they're like passively losing stamina because they're actually moving and trying to get an angle on things. It really just makes fights unpleasant to be in. It's just, it's not a good experience because you're not, you shouldn't have to be paying attention to your stamina because you're in the middle of a fight and you're trying to crouch or stand and get the right stance in order to fight somebody in the middle of fighting somebody. You shouldn't have to worry about that. And you generally aren't. And so you'll see a lot of people, a lot of big streamers and stuff, they'll be in an intense fight and everything. And all of a sudden they can't sprint. And I've had this too. I, I'm running, I'm, I'm shooting and everything. And all of a sudden I can't sprint. Even though I didn't really do a whole lot, it's because I was trying to crouch and do whatever else. All these different things took my stamina away. And now I'm either stuck out in the open or... My guy is sitting there just breathing super heavy. I can't really aim my gun very well. Again, I can't sprint. I can't do those things. Um, and there's just so many things that you have to keep track of that just make the experience less enjoyable. So what I think that they should do is, again, I, I agree with most of the other streamers that I've watched. The weight system just kind of needs to go away. Um, again, I understand it's a cool idea but it's when it's put into practice, it's just not good. And especially with this system now, when some of these armors and everything are gonna start getting heavier, even though it might be 0.04 or a whole kilo. I mean, we can look at my gear right here. This is what I'm running on the interchange right now. And I'm 34.7 kilos. And I don't have any crazy armor on or anything. I've just got this HPC. Um, I've got my helmet, my ears, my gun, a bag, and all this. And it's like, this is manageable because, you know, I can still sprint and everything. But you can see I'm overweight. That's what that orange is right there. If I take my gun off here, now I'm in the green and I'm now I'm underweight. But obviously, I don't have a gun. So when you think of the fact that if I take this off right here and it's like, all right, I don't have a gun or armor. All I've got is ammo, a helmet, ears, a bag, and some grenades. And I'm 19.4. And I add a Thor armor to that. Just, just wearing the Thor armor alone is like 98% of my weight right now. And that's not including any of the ammo, the rig, the helmets, or anything. So if I decide to wear a Thor armor, and I dare to put on a gun and then a rig and a backpack and a helmet and ears and stuff. If I kit myself out, I'm going to be at least 40 kilos going into the raid. And then because this is a looter shooter, you need to loot and you need to shoot. And if you do those things well, then you're going to win your fights and you're going to get a lot of loot from either raiders or scavs or PMCs or whatever you find in, in all the loot boxes and stuff that you hit. But now you have to carry the weight of all those things on top of how much you weigh just by by yourself. By the time people are done, a lot of people are going to have to really be relying on stims or just crawling through the grass in order to gain stamina because everyone is going to be so heavy with all this stuff 
I just think that the weight system needs to go away. I think inertia needs to stay because a lot of people blame inertia for a lot of these problems and inertia is not the problem. The weight system is the problem. I think it would be a better experience for everyone if there was no longer the weight system that it has. I understand that it's cool to say, hey, this gun in real life literally weighs this. This scope in real life literally weighs this. That's a really cool thing to know. But when you actually apply that weight and everything, it just... It just makes things tedious. So again, either the weight system or the armor system, it's cool on paper, it's bad in practice. Then they talked about the recoil system and oh my goodness, oh my damn. This, I, they showed um, some like early clips. Uh, I don't know if it was earlier this year or late last year. Uh, on Twitter and they were just kind of like shooting at a wall and everything and it looked atrocious like it looked worse than what we've got now and maybe worse than what we had previously um, for those of you who don't know when the game first came out there wasn't really a, a massive recoil system kind of like just when you shot you know your your gun behaved like kind of like it should in a shooter but um, people liked that recoil and then they tried to get more realistic with it which was very far away from realistic and it was just crazy people's guns were just going up into the sky and then they toned it back a little bit and it made it a little bit better but still not good at all um actually in that last in the last video that i made where i was explaining in the firing range why the sr2m was just kicking up like crazy um part of the issue is that their recoil system acted like every gun was just a pistol so when you shoot your gun just does this there's no stock and so whether you're using a rifle or a pistol, your gun just does this, which is not correct. And so when they showed off the recoil system, however many months ago, it looked terrible. And I just had, no one had good expectations for this. And right when they said, all right, here's the recoil system. We're like, all right, what do you got? And they showed it and oh my goodness, it looks incredible. The recoil and the vaulting are probably my two most excited for things in this next wipe. It looks so good. Uh, in the clip that they showed, there's just, it's it's almost a stock AK. He doesn't have a foregrip or anything. He's just using just an AK without anything really kitted out. And the thing isn't really moving much. And that's awesome. If we're going to go with realism, that's kind of how that is. If these guys are supposed to be super crazy, you know, ultra trained soldiers who go in and do all this fighting and everything they're not sitting there with their guns going up if you watch people who are actually experienced in shooting you can see that they're just it's just it's almost just straight back they know how to do it they know how to lean in they know how to control it and it doesn't go up into the air so anyone who says that recoil goes up in the air and everything like that the only time that that happens are the people who have never shot a gun before and they go to the firing range with a desert eagle and they shoot and they kick themselves in the mouth or take a little sawed off and they think they're cool and it goes flying. Those are not, that's not how that works. If you've never done that before and you have no idea what you're doing, yes, that's how that works. But with who the PMCs and everything are supposed to be, no. No, it's much more controlled and, and so this recoil system looks incredible. Really good. I, I really hope that they stick with it. The only thing that looked a little weird was anytime he was aiming down sight and moving, his his pretty much his butt stock was moving first. And it was kind of weird because there would be times where it was like his butt stock would cover his own target. So he would move and it was like kind of like this. And it was that needs to be ar arranged a little bit like your gun shouldn't be moving ahead of you. It should be moving with you. So if I'm here, if I'm aiming and I move that it shouldn't be doing this. It should be stuck on this shoulder. As long as my shoulder is stable, that's what the gun should be doing. So hopefully they kind of figure that out. Uh, obviously they said that it's still a work in progress and um, they're still, they're still working on it. And they said that they hope that it releases in the December patch, which I really hope it does as well. But regardless of that little buttstock thing there, the progress that they've made on the recoil itself looks phenomenal. Way better than me or anyone else expected. So good on them. 
Then they talked about the left shoulder transition, and I want to say left shoulder transition again, not left shoulder swap. Because what this is, it's not what we were kind of thinking where, you know, you would you have your gun here and then you actually swap your grip. And so now your left hand is on the trigger and your right hand is on the foregrip. They're not doing that. They're keeping it here so your hands don't change the grip or anything. And all it is is you're putting the stock in your other shoulder. So your, your stock is here in this shoulder and you want to swap. Now it's on this shoulder and you're just doing this. Um... And it looked a little interesting, like um, in a questionable kind of way. I'm not really sure if that's the best implementation for it. Um, I was kind of curious about how they would do that anyways. I, I haven't seen another game do it. So if there is one, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll check it out and just see how they did it. But um, I was expecting and hoping for an actual swap where you know you actually change grips and everything and then you can peek that way so we'll have to see it looked a little wonky and i i need to see it in practice like when there's peaking in tarkov you know you've got the right hand peak what you one of the last things you want to do in tarkov is you do not want to left hand peak because what happens is say there's a wall right here i'm either in a room or whatever or there's a column in front of me or something and I'm in a position where I can't peek someone to the right. I have to left hand peek them. If I do that in the game and I've got my gun here, if I do that and I peek left here, all of this side of my body is exposed before I can even see the person. They can see all this side of my body before I can see them. There's a lot of videos showing how the, the peeking and everything works in the game. So if you're curious and want a more in-depth explanation about how it works, go and watch the 500 videos on that. When you right hand peek, it's much easier because all you're doing is this and my gun is already exposed and you're like seeing like, just like the very, this area of my head and like this area of my shoulder. Not enough to really get a shot off, on, especially if someone is like quick peeking and everything. Um, the right hand peek is what you always want to do. People will literally run away from a fight just to reposition just so that they can get a right hand peek rather than a left hand peek because you get so much of your body exposed before you can even see your target um, currently with the left hand peek. So I want to see if the shoulder transition, if it helps with that, or if people are still going to see a bunch of your body, they might see your gun too, but can you see them? So. That's what I want to know because, again, I don't know if any other game has done it where it's a full transition, but I was trying to think in my head, how would you achieve that? Would you have a camera shift? Would you... I, I don't know how you would do it. Um, and that's why I can't get, like, super mad at BSG for not doing it the way that I want because I don't even know how I would do that. Because, um, you know, obviously, in the real world, we have two eyes if you're fortunate enough. Um, and so when you switch, you can see around that corner. So you've got your left eye. And then when you're on your right side, you can see with your right eye. Um, games don't work that way. They kind of just have one camera and that's that. Um, unless you're in VR and that's a different thing, but obviously this isn't a VR game. So I don't know how they would get it to where, unless they somehow put the camera that was like perfectly in the center to where you can see it just... Because I think right now the camera is slightly more to the right. I think. I could be wrong. But I wonder if they move the camera to be centered with the body. That would equal out either peak that you wanted to do. So it didn't matter which one you were leaning on. It would just... You would see the same amount each time. That might expose more of your body on each side if they were to do that. But at least you would be able to equally see through both eyes basically if you were leaning that way that's just an idea i don't know i don't know so we'll have to see what the shoulder swap brings um it's interesting i want to see more they touched a little bit on a new blind fire mechanic or not not mechanic but i guess just revamp where you can already blind fire but um i guess this is just better they've shown some other clips in the past that I think 
explain that and show that off a little bit better but what they showed in the live stream was just kind of like a third person perspective of just someone shooting out of cover and that's fine i don't use blind fire very much and most people don't because when they first added the blind fire mechanic back in i don't know what patch it was but it was a while ago you could do the blind fire mechanics either have your gun out to shoot around a wall or up to shoot above something and you could walk at the same time and so a lot of people use those blind fire mechanics in their fights and at some point i don't know if it was last wipe or the wipe before or something um they removed the ability to move while doing that which doesn't really make any sense to me um i don't know if there were just enough people complaining that the chads were walking and shooting above at the same time or whatever but that really shouldn't matter um you should be able to walk while blind firing so that's why most people don't really blind fire anymore because you have to like awkwardly stand in the door get yourself perfectly positioned extrude your gun out and just start shooting kind of like literally blind fire and hope that you hit something but then you have to move and kind of readjust and stuff just to do it again whereas before and what you should be able to do is move at any time so if i want to if someone's down the hall for me and i want to cover myself going into the next room i want to be able to already have my gun out be able to walk and shoot and sh and blind fire and cover myself and then stop blind firing shoot while i'm in the middle of the hallway shoulder swap go out this way and shoot you wouldn't be able to blind fire this way that would just be too awkward but it would be cool if they implemented it back where you could blind fire and move at the same time and then combine the shoulder swap and just be able to blind fire actual shoot shoulder swap and then get back into cover in in the next room all in one fell swoop talk about some highlights man that would be that would be awesome to see so we'll see hopefully they eventually bring that back but regardless i guess they've just kind of made blind fire better in general so this is where they touched on the btr again um and they gave more details about it so again they're they're adding a btr but what they're doing is they're adding some features to it that i did not expect at all i don't know if they mentioned this or hinted at it somewhere in the past and i just never heard of it but he said it was btr for hire so one you can hire it to transport you to a different location which is really interesting it will give you fire support which <laughs> i mean okay <laughs> like you're you're in the raid and you call in a btr and it starts covering you and or kills the entire server for you like i don't know how that works i don't know how you're gonna get such a privilege i'm assuming it's something with lightkeeper or you're gonna have to have super crazy rep for something i don't know it's gonna be a probably an insane quest line to do can't imagine that people are just gonna have just access to to doing this um but then it also has a loot extract which blew my mind i did not i did not think about that at all um and to me what that sounds like is if you've played the division it's kind of like in the dark zone so you know you can you can be in a raid you can do whatever you want say you kill a bunch of people or like a couple of your teammates die or something and you don't want to just leave the raid with all their gear and reset if if you're still perfectly equipped and ready to to go more into the raid or if you kill people right off the spawn um whether they try to kill you or you kill them whatever you get into an early fight and you have a bunch of loot you don't always want to say okay let's take this loot and just extract what you can do when this is implemented is say hey let's take all this loot we'll call the btr in we'll hand them all the loot and they will extract it for us and we can still keep going in our raid that's really cool so again it's like the dark zone you can go in get all the loot and everything you want call for an extract the helicopter comes in you deposit your loot it flies away and you can still keep going and that way it's it takes it to your stash it's secure and it doesn't matter if you die whatever you extracted through that btr you keep that's really cool they're also adding achievements and player profiles so this is actually kind of cool um i didn't think that i cared until i watched it and i was like oh you know what that's actually that's actually pretty cool and the player profile is actually really useful so the achievements they said um doesn't matter if it 
how many wipes happen or anything, none of your achievements are erased with wipes. So if you do something in this wipe and in three years, 12 wipes or whatever later, you still have that same achievement that you got in this next wipe. So that's cool. But the player profile is actually interesting. You can see a bunch of people's stats and everything, but you can also go into your, I don't know why you can't do this just in your stash, but they showed going to your weapon rack, putting whatever guns you want in there. And then you can right click and say display on profile. And when people look at your profile, they'll see it looks like it's locked to three guns. I don't know if they'll add more or anything in the future, but you have three weapons that are there. And I guess it's to show people like what your favorite guns are or like your proudest builds or something like that. So people can see that. But the really cool function about that is that anyone who sees those guns, they can actually go into those builds and save that preset to their own profile. So if you want to build a gun, let's say me and my buddy Braden had already gotten to level 40 or whatever. And one of my other buddies, Russ, he came in and he started playing really late and he was trying to do all the gunsmith stuff. Well, instead of me saying, hey, go to the wiki and look at all these, um, look at the builds and everything, or try to find the parts throughout your stash or on the market or whatever, I can just say, hey, I put gunsmith 12 on my profile, just go and save that preset, and then you can go and buy all the parts you need. And so he'll just go to my profile, he'll save the preset, he'll open it up in his thing, he'll hit find parts, it shows all the parts as long as he's got either everything unlocked or um, just the flea market unlocked and he can buy everything and then boom there you go there's there's your gun build or if someone just has a, a really cool or silly build um, that is interesting to you then you can you can share it that way so that's pretty cool I don't know if you'll be able to send or share things more deliberately so like if instead of having it on your profile I think it would be cool to just be able to send somebody my build. Like, I don't want to have to swap guns out and stuff to have them have my my build there. I want to be able to just send them, hey, here's here's all the gunsmiths. Whenever you're ready for it, just hit build and then find all the parts and then there you go. But we'll see what that brings. They also added your scav stats now. So when you go to overall here and you look here, you'll see that you have PMC and scav neither one of these are available right now but i guess they're going to be adding both now so you'll be able to see everything that your pmc has done and everything that your scav has done or your overall and be able to kind of see what you do on on both which people have been wanting for a long time and so i think that's pretty cool to see how many you know you go to your scav and you see how many pmcs that you've killed as a scav or you know run throughs and stuff like that so that's that's pretty cool There's going to be a new area in the stash called the Hall of Fame. This is pretty much where you can display what you deem to be like a good trophy or something. So whether I'm assuming whether it's like a mask or a helmet or a gun or armor, something like that. Um, it seems like from what I gathered, they didn't expand on this very much, but it seems like whatever you want to put on there as something that you don't want to use necessarily, but you just want to have on display, you can put in there. Um, I don't know what the limit of that would be. It would actually be kind of cool if you could do like full suits of armor and stuff kind of like you know like the iron man displays but instead of all that you could have like killa so you could have killa's helmet and his armor and then same with tagila you could have you know his helmet and his his rig and everything that'd be kind of cool i don't know the extent of that you may not be able to have that many things or that large of things i i don't know they didn't have anything any videos or anything to show on it but they're adding it. They're also adding something called Lightkeeper services. So you can get Zirachi support, which I guess as long as you're on Lighthouse and you have enough rep with Lightkeeper, somehow you can either summon or just radio Zirachi and say, hey, I need help. And he'll cover you. I don't know if that means just from that island. I don't know if that means that he'll show up to run alongside you. I don't know what that means, but um, they just said you get Zirachi support. Um, you also have, a, you can get a temporary truce with the cultists, which is interesting. Um, don't really know how that's gonna work either. If, if there's just like a flare or something you can pop off or 
or something that you can hold if you're doing a, a nighttime raid or something and the cultists show up you can you know flag this and say hey i'm you know truce and then they go with you um and then you can also get rogue support as far as i know this is all exclusive to lighthouse which is unfortunate because i hate lighthouse and i have only been there once this entire wipe so yeah that's interesting so zirachi support truce with the cultists and rogue support i guess they all come to help you as well so that's that's pretty cool um kind of gives me another reason not to go to lighthouse though at least not in late wipe or anything if i if i don't do anything with lightkeeper i'm definitely not going to lighthouse again because all there's going to be is people just having zirachi and and rogues right next to them they're adding some new guns and some magazine presets so um what you can do is it helps you load magazines so faster so if you want to take a magazine right here and you say all right i want to load pp and bp well instead of doing it this way and you know splitting the ammo in half here and saying okay i want this there and that there now my first 15 are bps and my last 15 are pps um now what you can do is you can say what if i want every other to be something and you can say okay well my first build will be bp second will be pp and then bp pp you know stuff like that i actually you know what let's use a, a better ammo type as an example instead of saying pp all the time we'll say bs and bt so you can do bs bt bs bt and you can save that so whenever you load your magazines next it'll just automatically load that configuration for you which that is pretty handy that's something that i was kind of saying that i would like um a while ago as well because i would try to you know do a little bit of of variations in in my ammo um so that you can get some you know armor damage and then flesh damage and then armor damage and flesh damage um and I, and I would sit there and I would do each individual one and I thought that was a cool idea and so now they're actually putting it in there so that's pretty cool. Uh, the new guns that they're adding is one that's called a 9A-91 or just a 9A-91. It shoots 9 by 39 rounds. It's basically a mini VSS. They're also adding a VSK-94 which is the same gun just a different configuration. I think all it is is that it just has a suppressor on it but other than that they shoot the same rounds and everything it's just the same version just with a suppressor um and then they're adding a rpd which is 762 by 39 so you can walk around using that while they were showing all this off by the way they said that this is on the current recoil system so that's why everything is so jumpy hopefully in the new recoil system there won't be near as much recoil with all this stuff and aim punch and like uh camera recoil and all that but yeah so you can have a full rpd drum mag full of uh, or box mag full of bps if you wanted to be just a disgusting human then nikita quickly said that they're updating i don't know if they're updating or adding an updated sks he just said updated sks then they're adding a sig spear which is this guy right here so it's a six hour i guess it's just called the mcx spear so i'm assuming it shoots the same rounds as an mcx so this looks pretty cool. That's a smexy little guy right there. I tell you who right there. That's, that's nice looking. Oh, yeah. They're also adding new armor, helmets, backpacks, clothing, weapon mods, etc. But they don't have uh, videos for any of that stuff. So the only videos that they had were for the, the three new guns that they mentioned. Um, but they don't have anything for the SKS or the SIG or any of that stuff yet. They mentioned that they're doing new quests um, and they're also doing quest rebalancing like they generally do. I'm really, really hoping that this next wipe, they change the trooper from being locked behind a quest because this task that they have, you have to find all these clocks and all the different maps and everything. And it's like, or paintings on different maps. Um, and there's like, I think it's like six paintings on streets and then one on each of the other maps. It's very tedious and that's like that's way too much just for a backpack i don't understand and that's that's not very much xp for that type of quest either but this is just a great bag but it's it's by no means the biggest bag but it's it's a great bag but i don't think it should be locked behind that kind of quest so i'm really hoping that they just let people go back to buying this like they did last wipe um because last wipe you could just literally buy this off the from ragman 
and that was that. So hopefully they do that again, but uh, it makes me sad that I can't just bring this out whenever I want. I have to keep doing like switch blades and stuff, which seem smaller almost, but I think that's just because I'm getting a bit more experienced and so I'm acquiring more loot and I need more space. Um, and I don't want to carry around a behemoth of either an attack two or a blackjack or what we just call the couch bag. Like those things are massive. Um, this guy is, I really like the way it looks in general. Um, and it's, it's got a good amount of space without being super crazy, like OP, if you want to call it OP, which I hate when people say that because it's a, it's a looter shooter. You need loot. Are you going to say that something's OP because you're carrying the loot that is supposed to be in the game? Anyways. They talked a little bit about anti-cheat and bans. He said that they're, they have something planned for anti-cheat. He didn't really specify anything. Um, he said that they banned like, was it like 10,000 players and RMT stuff like that, which I mean is good, but that's also something I kind of want to talk on is the RMT stuff. The more that they do to punish and make things harder for RMTers makes things substantially worse for the players who are playing things legitimately. Um, which when you take what they've done for the RMTs, the weight system, the current recoil, but we're going to exclude the new recoil and you add all that stuff together. That's why a lot of people are either cheating more because things are just getting more difficult. Um, they have the found and raid system, which I think also needs to be removed because it just, it makes people sit in bushes and in quarters corners the whole time. Like, not even for entertainment purposes like stank rat they're just doing it because they're too scared you know if you're if you're overweight you're louder for everyone you're slower than everyone you have to regain stamina all that stuff and then they just have all these things that are blocked that shouldn't be blocked but just because of rmtiers well rmtiers are gonna find a way to rmt regardless if you don't know what rmt means it means real money transfer so people go in they're usually cheating they go into a raid they go and kill everyone on the server because they can see everyone through walls and they can use the ricochet system to shoot people around corners and stuff or to throw grenades because they can see the arcs of the grenades or they'll kill all the bosses and everything or they'll just kill literally everything and then take all the loot extract and then they'll somehow give all that gear to somebody else whether that means hey i'm just gonna give you access to my account go and get all these things for me and then when you're done i'll take my account back and and people pay them to do that which i think is kind of silly to do when you really think about it because obviously this person is going to cheat even though they they may guarantee you they may say hey I, i've never cheated before no i'm just here's my level i've been playing the game for this many hours and all this stuff i'm not going to cheat on your account bro they're going to be cheating and they're going to get reported and they're going to get found out anyways. So by the time you get your account back and you have all the loot and all the stuff you want and you want to finally play, all of a sudden you're going to get banned. And that's that. So a lot of the things that they're trying to do to punish the cheaters actually hurts the real legitimate players more in the end. So that's something that they really need to work on. I think getting rid of the found and raid system, I think the weight system should go away. Um, I think you should be able to carry in whatever you want in raid some of my favorite clips of this game ever were back when like you'd watch summit and doc play and there's that clip when they were on interchange and doc gets killed early summit kills the guy and he loots his bag and the guy literally has like at least once one thick case and it's got like all this stuff in here guns ammo ammo boxes um, crazy armor, all this stuff in there. And some, some, it just starts freaking out. And he's like, I gotta go. I gotta go. But this dude is like super juiced. <laughs> this is like shroud running around right here. Like he's just got an SA 58 and a bow just for no reason. Just together. He has an Alton helmet. He has a gigantic fucking six B four, three armor. Like this guy was, this guy was not fucking around. He brought a fucking thick case, brother. Is it? He brought a thick case, brother. You understand that? You get that? <laughs> this man brought a thick I, I... case. He was planning to go do the route and f people up. I gotta leave. I'm not gonna do what he did. I'm not gonna run around and try. He already has it. Ah! <gasps> oh! Oh! Listen, 
I gotta leave. What's going on? I'm choking. I'm dying. I'm dying in real life because this is too insane, Doc. Oh, brother, I'm gonna be shitting myself this whole exit, bro. I'm scared, man. I'm fucking scared, bro. That, that is content. That is the stuff that people go, holy crap, look, I can't believe you just found all that stuff, man. That's so crazy. That, those are the clips you want to see. Not someone sitting in a bush and killing people and just, you know, talking crap. Even though, again, nothing against Stank Rat. I, I never thought that I would enjoy his videos. I never thought that I would enjoy that type of content. But Stank Rat is, he's funny. I'm going to, I'm definitely going to buy some of his merch. He's, he's cool. Um, he's just, uh, he's just scum. He's scum, but he's funny. So I think they, they really need to kind of go back to how things were originally for a lot of that type of stuff. And I think it would make the game more enjoyable for people and hopefully get them moving more as well instead of just sitting around. Um, but hopefully the new recoil system and everything helps with that as well. Helps people be more confident that they can actually hit their shots because their guns aren't going up to the sky or crazy horizontal, you know, whatever. Then they talked about animals being added to the hideout. So I think the cat is probably going to be the first thing that they're doing. And I would assume I'm almost positive that the only reason that they're putting the cat first is because of Landmark, because of this little guy. And that's fine. I just think that it's funny because I can't I, I'm 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 willing to bet money that if Landmark <laughs> never got that cat, if they were already planning to add animals in there, the first thing would have been a dog. But it doesn't matter because eventually they're, they're going to add a dog and everything as well. But someone mentioned in the chat a parrot and Nikita really liked the idea of a parrot. So I'm assuming we're going to see at least a cat, a dog and a parrot. Um, but then there's going to be some other stuff, you know, that comes along as well. Uh, we just don't know. And there's obviously no footage or anything of that. That's just stuff that they plan on adding at some point. Uh, and then one of the last things that Nikita was saying when he was kind of answering people was um, people kept saying, like, what about the shoreline update? And he literally said uh, shoreline will be updated in the December patch. And that's about it. Like when people were asking about it, he's like, I already said it's going to be updated. But he didn't it, from what I saw and from all the other reactions that I saw, he didn't actually say what was going to be updated. He just said shoreline was going to be updated. So I don't know what that means, but something's going to be happening with Shoreline. If you know what that is, leave it in the comments. Maybe he thought that he said it because he's probably said it in the past, but he just he didn't say it there. Um, so if you know what that is, leave it in the comments. But other than that, I, I don't know what that is going to be. But that's all the notes that I have for everything. I will leave the link to the live stream in the description. It is really good. I would go check it out again. I've watched it like two or three times. It's it was it was really good and I'm I'm really excited for the majority of the things that they're putting in this. I just I'm very concerned about the new armor system combined with the weight system. But again, this this whole thing, I mean, it really changed my perspective on Nikita as well cuz again, I just thought that he just didn't care and he was just doing this for whatever cuz that's all I had heard and uh there were a couple of clips that I that I saw that kind of seemed to suggest that as well but in this he was actually he was actually pretty funny too Nikita's a funny guy so again I, I think that he really wants this to succeed and do well and so do I I want nothing more than this game to thrive and just just blow up I want it to be incredible but you have to take the right steps in order to do that and I hope that they I hope that they take those right steps and some of these are definitely steps in the right direction but i think from this point on um after this patch i think they need to slow down on everything and they need to really focus on just fixing things fixing things that have been broken since the game released seven years ago and just really making it run well like you shouldn't have to have the most insane computer that money can buy in order to run this game decently so i'm hoping that whenever they do the unity patches as well and they update to that hopefully the the newer versions of unity can handle more detail and everything because the main reason why streets runs as poorly as it does is because they have so much detail throughout that entire map and it's really cool it's very beautiful it's the bsg 
should get freaking awards for having just some of the best map design and everything out there their game design is questionable at times so i think they need to just really optimize the detail maybe scoot some things back if unity can't really handle all the detail that they want or uh what i would do and this would fix the majority of the lighting problems because i work in unreal engine port it over to unreal engine i know that that would take a lot of time and a lot of work and everything but the end result would be incredible things would look so much better it would function so much better we don't have the weird sketchy dude who tried to take everyone's money all of a sudden but yeah those are just my thoughts and uh kind of my reaction to it and everything so overall i'm very excited i'm very happy um and i i really look forward to this next wipe but i'm gonna end it there so thank you all so much for watching i hope that you enjoyed if you did enjoy hit that like button it's greatly appreciated and it helps out the channel very much what are your thoughts on all this stuff on the new patch are you excited are there things that you really are looking forward to are there things you're not do you agree with me do you disagree either regardless of if you disagree or whatever that's fine just keep it like keep it cool there's no reason to get super you know i don't want to see a bunch of comments where people are hating on things or calling people out or whatever it's this it's a game first of all let's calm down and second we can disagree or agree to disagree it's it's fine so if there's something that you didn't like or you did like or someone else doesn't like that's fine you can mention it but just don't get crazy with it but thanks again so much for watching i hope that you enjoyed if you did enjoy and you're not subscribed yet then hit that subscribe button but only if you want to and i will see you guys in the next video have a good one achievements finally in the game after seven years oh my god they great thank god they exist bsg long live bsg mm -hmm.